It's gecko breeding season and you have eggs. You want to see all of your eggs hatch and I want to help you make sure that all of your eggs hatch. One of the key factors to seeing success in this process will be deciding which egg hatching material to use. Today's topic will be deciding which of these egg hatching materials to use to ensure the success of your egg hatching. And make sure that you watch for our first pro tip in the middle of this video. Why do we need to talk about egg hatching material? And why is it important in this process? Well, most geckos bury their eggs in a moisture holding material or hide their eggs in a high humidity location. We need to emulate that condition in our hobby. Hey, I'm really excited about talking about this topic. I've taken notes for the last few days. Usually my videos are five to 10 minutes long. This one could be three days long. So we're going to try to shorten this as much as possible and, and stay on the, the key information. So there's going to be some items that are just out of scope for this video. Before we start talking about the materials, let me bring up two more points. One, most people err on having the material too moist. This is a big, big problem and will cause more issues than having the material dry. Um, if it's too dry, you'll see dents. Uh, if the dents are small, you can add water and those dents will pop out. If it's too moist, you'll develop mold and those eggs will go bad. The other point that I want to make is these methods work for me. I've been doing this for about 15 years and gone back and forth with different methods. And again, this is what works for me. It might not work exactly for you. It's all, again, a basis of trial and error. What we're going to do is find a way to start the process out on the right foot for you. On to the material. So we're going to talk about two different types of geckos. One that lay eggs in lower humidity situations. African geckos, geckos that lay in sand. I've done a video before on this subject. So I've collected several eggs. Here's the box that we're going to use. I'll go ahead and open it up and we'll put the eggs in. I've added the eggs to the, uh, the perlite uh, medium. You can use anything for a wet medium. And I'm going to go ahead and add the link again in the description and right here. So you can go ahead and watch that video later. The second type of geckos are those that lay in a moist material. These geckos include the New Caledonia geckos like crusted geckos and include leopard geckos. You know, this topic sounds real familiar to me. Actually, I wrote an article about four or five years ago on this topic on the Supreme Gecko page and I'm going to go ahead and post the link in the description and I'll see if I can post the link here in the video too. The first material that I want to cover in this video is no material at all. I think some of you have seen this uh, product on the market before. Um, I think it's called THG in different versions. Um, you put the eggs on the, cart here, or the uh, carton here, put water in the bottom, put this back together, Close it, has a nice little thermometer there, and let the eggs sit until they hatch out. This allows for no uh, actual touching of the material by the eggs, yet the eggs are exposed to the humidity. I've used this a few times. It, it works for me, but I prefer other methods. The first material that we're going to talk about is hatch mite. I'm sorry, hatch right. I've used this product before, and I'll, I'll be very honest, I did not have very good success with it. I know some people use it with great success. I just feel that it uh, dries out too quick, and it's really hard to monitor how much moisture is actually in the material. If it dries out, you don't notice it, and your eggs can dry out just too quickly. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the picture from the Supreme Gecko article, and here we have the six different materials that we'll be talking about today. In the upper left-hand corner is dirt. I've used dirt before, it works occasionally, but again, the biggest problem with dirt is that it's an organic material and the eggs will mold a little bit too quickly. Next material that we'll talk about is peat moss. Peat moss, again, is an organic material. The eggs will mold a little quickly using peat moss, so let's go ahead and eliminate that material as well. And the third material is sphagnum moss. I've used sphagnum moss in the past for a number of years, actually, and it worked very well. The animals enjoy uh, burying their eggs in the, the sphagnum moss, uh, but again, it's an organic material. 
I found that the sphagnum moss was hard to detect when it was drying out to. Would dry out a little bit quickly. And again, since it's, a, since it's an organic material, you'll have some issues with mold with sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is a good material to use. However, we're going to eliminate sphagnum moss for the purpose of this discussion because it is a little bit more difficult to use. That brings us to perlite and vermiculite and supreme hatch material, SHM. So let's talk first about perlite and vermiculite. Both perlite and vermiculite are easy to use. Add water, make sure that there's not too much water, and place the eggs in the material. Fairly uh, simple process. The only slightly difficult part about using either vermiculite or perlite is making sure that you have the right water content. If adding the water, the material is too dry, the eggs will dry out too quickly, and if too wet, the eggs will actually mold. So how do you get that right balance between how much material to use to how much water to use? It's all a matter of using a scale to, to weigh everything out. So let's go ahead and check out that process. When I started breeding geckos years ago, I went to a, a site that really had a, some great information on it uh, from Albie Scholl's Two Cool Get, uh, Reptiles. I'm going to go ahead and throw the link in the description again. And uh, what this site provides is some great measurements for the amount of material, uh, specifically perlite, to the, uh, the amount of water that you want to add. So we're going to follow those directions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the scale. Set the measurement to grams. I've made that mistake before. And we're going to go, go ahead and weigh out 20 grams of perlite and add it to the deli cup. Okay, we're all set with our 20 grams of material. We're going to go ahead and add, per Alby Scholl's instructions, 0.8% of the water weight. And that equates to 16 grams. So ultimately, we want our weight to be 36 grams. So let's go ahead and add the water and do it slow because it will adjust quickly. So let's see if I can get it to stop at 36 grams here. Right on, I got lucky. So I basically, after doing this for several years, and I'll mix that up with my finger before I add any eggs, but over the years I, I have a feel just by, uh, by weighing it myself without the, the uh, scale of what this should be, but absolutely, you could do this mix in a big bowl uh, so that you can do several deli cups at the same time. This will hold true with the, the uh, vermiculite as well. Simply weigh out the material and add the water content to 0.8 as uh, Albie instructed, and you should be all set. Another final note on, on this material, it will dry out. If you find that it's drying out, what you can do is use a little squeeze bottle, a wash bottle, and add just, just enough water to the edges to get that, that um, material to absorb the water and keep those eggs hydrated. Going back to our picture one more time, we see in the bottom right the Supreme Hatch material. Supreme Hatch material is a high-fired clay material that's water absorbent. You might be familiar with this material if you've gone to a, a ball game and uh, looked at a, a baseball field. The uh, warning track is actually covered with this material. You also might be familiar with this material if you do bonsai as a hobby, uh, as a uh, soil additive to absorb moisture. The greatest thing about Supreme Hatch material is how easy it really is to use. Let me go ahead and grab some here and I'll, show, I'll uh, give you a demonstration. So I'm going to grab enough to fill about half of a deli cup. I'm going to add some water. Notice I don't have a scale. I'm going to fill the water past the height of the Supreme Hatch material. And I'm going to let it sit there for two minutes. And the two minutes are up. And now what I'm going to do is take this water and dump it into another bowl so that all that I have left is the Supreme Hatch material. I make sure that all the water is removed from the Supreme Hatch material and it just barely drips out. And it's that easy. No measuring and it's ready to go. Little divots and you can put your eggs in. The cool thing about Supreme Hatch material also is that 
When it does dry out, you'll see that it goes from this dark brown to the light brown again. And again, you just add a little bit of water to the edges and you're all set. And here's our very first Supreme Pro tip with this Supreme Hatch material. When we're done with our breeding season, we take all of the Supreme Hatch material, dump it into a bucket, rinse the bucket with warm water, hot water, dump all the water out, spread it out in another pan, and let it sit until the next breeding season. That's right, it's reusable. So to wrap up, we talked about the hatching material, but it all starts with, again, ANT, Animals, Nutrition, and Tank. Make sure your animals are healthy before you start breeding. Again, I'll put a link in the uh, description for the best hide material to use, and I'll throw a link up in this video. So choose the right material, follow these instructions, and I'll guarantee you'll have a, a great breeding season and lots of eggs hatching out. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments. If you disagree with anything that I've uh, included in this video, leave them in the comments. If you like the video and you think that it helped, throw a like on it and certainly subscribe. Thanks for watching.